Anna Meffert is a theatre director and documentary maker who graduated from the Institute of Performative Arts in Maastricht. The perfect topics for her work are everything she's frightened or insecure about. This results in theatrical performances where she or her performers improvise and where the audience can either feel very uncomfortable or enjoy themselves. If Only My Belly Was Made of Gold is Anna's graduation performance, a physical theatre play about the bigger belly. <laughs> Tell us a bit about the concept, the process. How did it all start? It? Um, it all started with my own belly, I guess. And I always, with when I make a piece of art or theater, then I'm thinking, I'm not really thinking about the subject. It's always about the subjects that are already in my life. And that was with the protruding belly, with the fat belly of mine, or. I was always, always very focused and obsessed with it and with other people's belly. And it was always, because I have a little bit more belly than the peers around me, I was always wondering in a very mild way, not a very angry way, but mild, always thinking, should I get less belly or is it okay? No, less, 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 and always have these uh, positive feelings when there was less and always negative feelings when it was more and I was thinking so weird this object of your own body and you're totally obsessed with the moving the movement of that that particle of your body and then I tried to make a performance about that about that specific body part where so many I think the most opinions are about and to get that out of context and get people to have their have a new a fresh look on that this is a statement towards our current society i think it's like people are really group people like monkeys almost so you just follow each other so now we like skin so everyone likes skin not everyone luckily but so it's not one person who is behind it. I think more like the capitalistic world is kind of behind it, like to make us believe that things are more beautiful than other things. Um, also, everything you give attention becomes more beautiful. So when we would um, cancel all the skin people in Instagram and would see every day more fat people, then we, I, I can tell everybody would like that and would eat more, I think, because you're more familiar with that kind of um, uh, look. And I think that's, that's what I like about my performance, that you, you get to look so long to bellies that you can, can have a more focused look on that because you don't see it so much. I, I thought that I maybe would be totally okay with my own belly, but that's also not. What, what are your future plans are going to look like? The first next thing is I'm going to focus about how people talk with each other. The chit chat, the regular daily nonsense chit chat we have every day, the whole day. Okay. Thank you <laughs> for coming. You zou hier echt een hele goede making of van kunnen maken. This is a collective of Maastricht-based photographer Laura Knipsal, knitwear designer Laurie Bessems, jewelry designer Iris Klaasens, and print designer Sam Schobben. They've met each other through participating in several Fashion Clash activities. They decided to team up for this edition of Fashion Clash Festival. First letter of our four names, Laurie, Laura, Iris and Sam. Yeah, and we want to see the, the products together. Our designs make, make each other stronger, I think. They work really well together. We work with similar materials. So we hope this is a start and we really hope to continue. My name is Laura Knipsaal, I'm a fashion photographer and I also sell Cityscape fine art prints. I work with sustainability and in my work but also with the brands I collaborate with. And I think one of our core values of our 
collective list is also sustainability because we all care about that subject. The whole styling comes really good together with all of our different works because my fine art prints do have a lot of color and it matches with some of her work but also the minimalistic style of my photography matches with all of the work of Iris and uh, Lauri. I am Sam, I am a print designer. You can order the uh, prints in, in silk, in uh, duvet covers. Today we uh, started a photo shoot with the four of us together and uh, actually we would show our stuff in the pop-up store and we would like to um, show how uh, beautiful our products blend in together. I'm Iris, um, I'm a jewellery designer. I totally think, especially because we're all different in a way, um, then it's very interesting to learn from each other's way of, of yeah, approach and way of doing things. I think that's, that's the strong thing to, to combine your strengths and, and also to, we thought, okay, it's nice to, to not think everything out and, and just let things happen on the spot. So how did you guys meet up? The coaching program, yeah. Uh, and I met them actually at the pop-up store, the Christmas pop-up yeah, store. Um, now I'm also uh, sharing the, my workspace with Iris. For somehow it really clicked together and we were like, hey, we like what we're doing. For the future we can maybe do a shop or an exhibition or maybe even design a collection together. Shroud is an educational collaborative project between Valentin Kemping, Fashion Clash and the students of the Institute of Performative Arts in Maastricht. The project is initiated by Valentin Kemping, who is conducting research at the Academy of Fine Arts in Antwerp. Under the title The Sacred Space of the Action, she develops symbolic and practical shrouds, aiming to place that in life so the dark can find its place again. We're here just to tell you something about the project we're working on, which is all about Shrouds. This time, morning uh, becomes more private. It is not something collective anymore. It is something that uh, people uh, deal with it themselves. And uh, not only about or for the one who died, but also for the people that are left behind. I didn't know the word shroud. It's a, a sort of cloth or a, a fabric that you wrap someone in when somebody dies uh, and then you burn the body or you bury the body. Uh, I was initially like drawn to the project because I thought, ah, death, that's a very um, almost taboo subject. And how do you make something like this uh, light? We've all chosen a loved one that has passed on or not yet, and we're all making one. Individually. And it was interesting because with the person that I'm making uh, the shroud for, um, she told me, oh, I already know how I'm going to die. At one point in life, I'm just going to decide, this is the point where I'm no longer going to be here, and I'm just going to disappear. And with that thought in mind, I created a stop motion video working with wool and felt to create a sort of light hearted little film uh, approaching the subject of death. Different. I'm making one for my grandfather who has passed away a year ago. Um, and it's a very interesting way of uh, re-evaluating his death. I'm using my grandfather's ties, he had so many. Um, but it's also a way of recycling something that would have never found another use. So here's Noah, uh, working on, what are you working on? Yeah, I'm now just working on uh, the body to make the shroud on. My shroud will be made of textile dipping concrete. I'm gonna put it over uh, the body. What are you working on? Uh, right now I'm hand stitching these pleats um, so that you can see the, the bone structure. It's a skeleton. My shroud, I wanted to make it less hard because I think there's beauty in death. Cool. Thank you. Next we're going over to Isa. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna build a tent, which is um, in the woods. 
and the fabric from the tent is made of cotton and with like seats on it. So at the end, the tent will kind of fall over the dead body and this, the seats will just transform into new plants so that a kind of a, the life continue or like a new life is grown out of the seats. <laughs> hey, Pauli. <Hello. laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing an installation and it's an installation with ice blocks which are colored and it's mainly about the process that like what's left over at the end of uh, the process is the color on the um, fabric and for me uh, it's really about the traces which people leave behind when when they're gone off. Thank cool. you. Next we're going over to Cecilia. I've been creating this shroud for my great-grandfather who was a war hero but never got to have a proper funeral so I'm hoping that with this shroud I will give him the well the funeral that he deserves and it sort of exists out of all these different pieces which are years from his life in which he's been writing or creating. He was actually an actor and a writer himself. Um, so that's a nice bond between the two of us. And at this moment, I'm creating my video or sort of the outline for it um, because we will present this project in videos. You can find all of our work online uh, because we will be presenting them in video formats uh, on a website we built ourselves. <laughs> so you can visit that now uh, in a link or a QR code beneath this video or yeah. above or next to it. Yeah, and just um, let us know what you think and maybe you find your way to be buried someday. Mm -hmm.